welcome to Nerd Stalker. I am Adolfo Fronda at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. And you are? Yeah. I'm Greg Vori, aka Social Greg on Twitter. How are you doing, man? Good, good, man. Yeah. Allergies kicking up this time of year. You know, still going stir crazy in our homes. You know, how about you? Ah, uh, no allergies, but uh, stirring nice. the crazy. That's for sure. Stirring the the crazy. benefits of being surrounded by concrete, Greg, in San Francisco. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> It's hot. Well, just to remind everyone out there, we do have our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash nerdstalker. Also, if you look at our nerdstalker.com blog on um, the post from now on, you, sh- you will probably also see a- another way to donate uh, via PayPal. There's a PayPal donation button for us. Uh, we could sure use any support right now that you could spare. Um, you know, Greg's fully employed. I'm looking for a job right now. So anything we can get out of this would be a big help uh for for us and and especially myself (laughs) sorry greg it's gonna be uh, 80 90 10 split okay okay all right man let's go through the first one what are we doing here uh i want to thank drew harwell of the washington post managers turn to surveillance software always on webcams to ensure employees are really working from home which is creepy. When the coronavirus shuttered the Kansas headquarters of the High Plains Journal and our agricultural trade paper for farmers and ranchers across the Midwest, digital marketing director James Lush decided to replicate the office experience entirely online. Sounds like a great idea, right? Employees were told to create a digital avatar and spend the workday in a virtual office replete with chat room cubicles and a gossip ready water cooler. They were also instructed to keep their home webcams and microphones on and at the ready. So a spontaneous face-to-face chat was always only a click away. Lush believes the software by the San Francisco tech startup Pragly is the future of remote work, but not everyone is so smitten. In the weeks since social distancing lockdowns abruptly scattered the American workforce, businesses across the country have scrambled to find ways to keep their employees in line, packing their social calendars and tracking their productivity to ensure that they're telling the truth about working from home. Thousands of companies are now using using monitoring software to record employees' web browsing and active work hours, dispatching the kinds of tools built for corporate offices into workers' phones, computers, and homes. But they also have sought to watch over the workers themselves, mandating always-on webcam rules, scheduling thrice daily check-ins, and inundating workers with not-so-optional company happy hours game nights, and lunchtime chats. Company leaders say the system are built to boost productivity and make the quiet isolation of remote work more chipper, connected, and fun. But some workers said all of this new corporate surveillance has further blurred the lines between their work and personal lives, amping up the stress and exhaustion at a time when they feel they have the standing to push, when they feel like they don't have the standing to push back. Uh, David Handelman Hansen, a co-founder of the remote work software firm Basecamp, said companies are increasingly subjecting workers to closer supervision due to fundamental distrust, and they'll stay motivated on their own. The virus lockdowns, he added, have also led some managers to frame this monitoring in the new age language of social gathering in hopes of elighting over the fact that workers are being watched. What people crave is human connection. These are the crumbs of human connection, he says. You don't end up extracting better, deeper, more creative work by suggesting people to even harsher measures of surveillance. Nearly half of the US labor force is now working from home, according to a study by MIT researchers in April. And many employees are probably not working, are probably working longer, more sporadic hours than ever before. NordVPN Teams, which runs virtual private networks for businesses, said in March it had seen working time in the United States climb from 8 to 11 hours a day since the stay-at-home orders began. A growing cottage industry of what some managers call tattleware now caters to company leaders wanting some way to peer over workers' shoulders and to confirm productivity. Productivity. Some um, several time tracking and employee monitoring companies, including ActiveTrack, HubStaff, 
Time Doctor and Terramind told the Washington Post they have seen their customer base and revenue soar since the pandemic pushed many companies remote. Several companies allow managers to regularly capture images of workers' screens and list employees by who is actively working and their hours worked over the previous seven days. One system, InterGuard, can be installed in a hidden way on computers, on workers' computers and creates a minute-by-minute -minute timeline of every app and website they view, categorizing each as quote-unquote productive or quote unproductive, and ranking workers by their productivity score. The system alerts managers if workers do or say something suspicious. In a demo of the software shown to the post, the workers' job client and file were all flagged just in case employees were looking for jobs elsewhere. InterGuard's system can also record all of the workers' emails, instant messages, and keystrokes, and takes pictures of workers' screens as frequently as every five seconds, which managers can review as they please. You could literally watch a movie of what the, that person did, said Brad Miller, chief executive of the system's Connecticut-based parent company, Awareness Technologies. Business is booming for their subscription-based software, Miller said. Hundreds of companies a week, three times their normal interest, are now about are now asking about using the employee surveillance tool. Uh, Allison Green, whose popular Ask a Manager blog uh, serves as a workplace advice column and sounding board, said she heard from a rush of housebound workers stressed out about their bosses' increasing demands. Many said they were already facing incredible anxiety over how their job responsibilities will change, whether their companies will have to lay off workers or cut wages, or even whether their industry will survive. But they're hesitant to speak up about the constant monitoring for fear that any criticism could lead them to join the more than 30 million Americans who have filed for unemployment aid since mid-March. It's really demoralizing to feel like you've done good work for your company, maybe for years, and have a solid, reliable track record. And they're treating you as if you're going to spend your days drinking beer and watching YouTube, Green said. People don't work well under that kind of scrutiny, even in the best of times. A digital marketing worker in Tennessee who spoke on condition of anonymity so as not to be punished by her boss said the aggressive amount of check-ins via emails, calls, text messages, or Zoom video calls have left her team feeling incredibly stressed out. They're just checking in constantly. Every meeting is, what are you working on exactly, she said. I worked all weekend and woke up to an email this morning asking for everything I did last week, unquote. This new wave of digitally mandated corporate camaraderie is quickly burning some workers out, said Green, who has heard from dozens of employees feeling socially fatigued and unable to say no, lest they be painted as an outcast. One respondent told her they were overwhelmed with Slack, social support channels, Zoom call, fun challenges, and chain emails about quarantine tips and recipes and writing. I have more meetings now than I've ever had in the office, and this is while also juggling a few workload a full workload. There are some signs that all of this tech-enabled social monitoring is hitting a wall. The video chat service Zoom recently removed an attention tracking setting, which alerted a call host when a, a participant was focused elsewhere, following public outcry about how invasive and creepy the feature seemed. <laughs> but some employees are registering their feelings in more subtle ways. At the High Plains Journal, one woman working from home with her four kids gave her Pragley avatar, a shock of white hair, and in meetings when workers click the celebrate button to fire off a burst of virtual confetti, Luce said it's now almost always done sarcastically. Oh my God, Where have, we, have we gone backwards here? It's creepy, right? Well, yeah. I, I mean, let's go back to, um, I mean, you and I have been in this kind of tech startup area world for a while now right and and it's right. been always common for i think us working in the workforce to kind of get you know some of these slack messages stuff like that but it seems like i don't think i've been as productive in the office as i was at home now but i mean what, what do you think well you know one of the things uh that comes to mind when i think about this is all these episodes and, and mentions that we've done about agile right and agile methodology and all, even not just us, but in the general business zeitgeist and how this goes completely opposite because one of the tenets of Agile is trust, right? Like trusting your employees and then letting them self-organize and they get more stuff done. And this is, these are all anti-patterns. 
Yeah, the fact that the startups are actually cashing in on, on on this is just amazing to me. It's almost like propagating this trust thing. But I mean, it's kind of the yeah. world. We're, it's kind of the world we're in, right? Yeah, and, I, I mean, I understand. You know, someone there's always going to be someone gross trying to make a buck on something gross. And um, but the the unfortunate, you know, uh, decisions made by these companies obviously don't know anything about agile. Their their managers obviously have you know control issues and are micromanaging and in the long term this this hurts your company this doesn't help you know none of these people are going to stay at these companies if they if they continue these type of practices because this is just a sort of reflection of of the company culture uh, at, at the office itself even if they say it's not the underlying is is the truth and the truth is emerging here of how uh, horrible these practices are. I guess in our interviews, if we go if we go to an interview on online, we said, "Do you use Pragly?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's totally crazy. Good man. question. Good question. Yeah, All right, right, Greg. Next story. What is the next story? Let's talk about the next one. I'll turn on my microphone. Sorry about that. Um, so <laughs> let's go to something creepy to something kind of weird. What's happening online? So. Um, YouGov, uh, a really famous kind of uh, market research company, says nearly half, 47% of Americans working from home aren't always wearing pants or other legwear during their <laughs> work day. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I saw, I think I, I just caught uh, Adolfo looking down. No, no, anyway. <laughs> yeah, in this heat? Come on. <laughs> but uh, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to kind of just talk about this. I, let me bring up the article here. Um, one sec. All right. Uh, During a recent segment on Good Morning America, some viewers noticed that ABC reporter Will Reed wasn't wearing pants during his broadcast. A YouGov (laughs) poll finds that Reed, who issued a good-natured statement about his appearance, is probably far from alone when it comes to going pantless while working from home. So, as I said earlier, nearly 47% of Americans working from home aren't always wearing pants during their workday. And about 1 in 14 people, 7%, currently working from home due to COVID-19 say they never wear pants (laughs) while working at home. (laughs) Another 5% of this group say rarely wear pants Hmm. working from home. And so I I was always kind of running about that, right? Because you only see the upper half of us during any of these calls, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, but it also kind of comes down to the point of... um, I, I saw some data about hygiene recently, and and basically the hygiene um, uh, products are now taking a dump because no one's buying any hygiene products that are not going to work. So what yeah. do you think about this? It's kind of interesting, huh? Yeah, that's wild. I mean, my joke with everyone is the next company I start, it's going to be sweats mandatory, right? Or shorts mandatory. You know, <laughs> do away with slacks. But yeah, that's that's uh, one of the things I heard too. Is like I know there were some people complaining about uh, not having hair dye or whatever. Look at my my white beard here. That's happening, you know. That's and my crazy. goofy long hair of no haircuts. Yeah. So, but yeah, no pants all the way. Go for it, you guys. Wear shorts. How about shorts? I'm down with that. Or pajamas. Yeah, who Good for cares? you. Who cares? Power to the people. Right. I mean, I I don't know. It's just it's just like your previous. Um, segment is just i i don't know what it matters but it is kind of funny i've always kind of wondered that in my head it's like i wonder what what they're wearing so let's yeah, move on good. to the next segment all right so another uh, drive-in thing <laughs> I, yeah we can't go in a, we can't go a week without a drive-in story and i can't get enough of these things and it gets you know it's really weird because we just started talking about we're like you know this is kind of a good idea and then the next week it's like oh there's a little more thought about this kind of thing and now this week it's full implementation here so thanks to abc7 for this and the story by jr stone uh coronavirus california is the title drive-in movie theaters reopen the bay area with new rules amid coronavirus pandemic um Unlike traditional movie theaters where moviegoers sit next to one another under an auditorium, drive-in theaters provide an isolated experience perfect for enjoying movie from the comfort of your vehicle, especially in a time of pandemic when it's crucial to keep your distance. So you know it's, and this is a quote, so you know it's something fun. Poor kids haven't been out of their house in two months, so says Serena Frost, who brought her kids to the show on Tuesday night to see Trolls and Onward. Tuesday night show 
marked the second night back open for the West Wind Solano Drive-In in Concord. Tuesday is also family night, which means the cheapest day to go. There are also some new rules and the playground is closed. The kids they talk to are focused on things, popcorn, some drinks, and some candy. But don't expect to get any of that at the snack bar. It's also closed due to the new rules. But Tuesday, most people came prepared. West Wind Drive-In Theaters announced on its website that they're reopening not just the Concord location, but all four of their theaters across California. The San Jose, Concord, Sacramento, and Glendale theaters uh, to reopen come with strict rules, the company said on their Facebook page. So here are the West Wind Drive-In Theater's new rules listed from their website. And this is what I found particularly interesting about this uh, article. People must stay in their cars at all times except to visit the restroom. You must wear a face covering when leaving your car for any reason. You may not park your vehicle within 10 feet of each other. Limited number of people in the restroom at a time except adult with child. Customers who do not follow these rules will be asked to leave. Prices vary by location, but general admission is $8.25, a dollar, $1.75 per youth ages five to 11 years old, and children under four are free, the company said. So it's really fascinating, Greg, because we were just talking about this, right? And you were saying, how do you think this could work? And, and it's happening now, and there you go. That's kind of the rules that they've sort of implemented. And you know, everything is sort of a work in process right now with, with all these different businesses. And uh, it's interesting to see how how everyone's sort of adjusting to these times. Oh, totally. I, I guess AMC theaters will, and, and Sundance will have to go buy back uh, these, these drive-ins. I again, love huh? it. I love it. I love drive-ins. We'll see what next week's drive-in story yeah, comes I, Yeah, I was trying up. to figure out, like, remember when we go, went to the drive-in and a little kid that they used to put this speaker thing inside your window? Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. You know, you I wonder if they're like, still doing that, man. Uh, well, I was going to Or wondering. is it a phone app or what? Because who, you know, a lot of cars don't even have radios anymore, but. Yeah, I was just trying to figure something? that out. How do they get? the sound but i guess like the ones like in the where you said that the restaurants were opening up their own kind of like you know drive drive yeah. in their parking lot i guess they just kind of open up to crank down their window and just listen i guess <laughs> love it okay let's go to the next one huh all right oh man have you what do i miss yes yeah what do you miss so i'm gonna ask you a bunch of these things but uh thanks to uh hmm. my friend new friend on twitter a uh, Stuart uh shuffman uh which is known as uh, aka Broke ass Stewart. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Broke love ass that Stewart. Site. I love that guy. I love that guy. Yeah. So, so he's talked about the things I miss, hate, and love during this coronavirus times, and and he just he talks about uh, I miss the bars. Uh, mm -hmm. He misses restaurants, obviously. Yeah. Miss protesting. I thought this is very San Francisco. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Miss protesting. He's an activist. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. he misses his family, and. Uh, you know, yeah, but you also hated the thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that died, you know, of this of this virus. But um, oh, but of course, it, we miss all of them. But yeah. at the same time, um, he says uh, he's been very grateful, you know. And I wanted to ask you, you know, my friend, uh, what what are the things that you've have missed? Uh, anything, you know? Uh, I think I think mostly it's mixing with friends and the variety of friends, right? Um, back to the story that we talked about about people having crazy dreams or whatever because of the lack of stimuli i really feel also like i i don't i'm not having enough of uh, variety right that that i'm used to and i sure would like a lot more of that and boy do i miss jujitsu i miss choking other men and and <laughs> and breaking their or almost simulating bro breaking their limbs Oh my god oh that didn't quite god. sound right right <laughs> i miss choking men <laughs> No, I was wondering about that. I, I, yeah, I was kind of thinking about the things I missed too. I, I, I think I missed the freedom of making the decision to go out at any time. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with that. Um, yeah. I miss, uh, I miss taking the bus. <laughs> I yeah. believe, it, believe it or not. I, I miss mean, earning an income. How about uh, that? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think you and uh, thirty million other people. I think uh, at this point. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh my God. Um, I think, uh, but you know, I think like like uh, broke ass Stewart said, aka broke ass Stewart said, the you know, I think it's it's the the gratitude of many things that you know that we are missing is really what the main thing is. So anyway, yeah. Speed round. Speed round. Swapabee. What the hell is that? 
Yeah, so Swapabee is an online no money bartering platform where you can trade away your unwanted items for wanted items. Uh, I found this really cool. So building themselves as a sustainable exchange platform platform for a clutter-free world, Swapabee is an online platform and or app, if you prefer, based on the idea that one person's junk is another person's treasure, sort of like what the original eBay was, but without the bidding and the money. How it works, you take whatever you've got lying around and don't want, figure out a rough value, then post a photo and price range to the site. You can then either search for your items you want of the same value, or you can let them their algorithm bring up five available items that you may want to trade for it. You and your fellow trader then chat through the platform and decide how to exchange mail or in person. Okay. You are not limited to swapping items within the same categories. Swapabee is a nonprofit that nevertheless has operating costs. So while the first two swaps are free, each one after that costs 50 pence. Yes, that's right, Pence. As it stands, the platform is UK only for now. That's crazy. The bartering system's coming back. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Speed round. <laughs> well, IKEA. IKEA. Yes, IKEA. Now, you want to feed your whole neighborhood, just like uh, Adolfo does with his backyard and his garden vegetables. <laughs> yes. Yeah, IKEA now releases a free design for Garden Sphere, which is about 10 feet by 10 feet, and it feeds the entire neighborhood, they claim. So, um, latest release uh, going to green to a whole new level. In fact, the new product design allows users to grow food for an entire block or neighborhood, depending on population, of course. And it's available free online. For download, the blueprints are intended to assembly of urban structure used to grow produce that is normally to be grown in our, in rural areas. So it's mm -hmm. called the grow room. So check that out, everyone. Look at the grow room. If you want to build a grow room for your neighborhood, your backyard, your neighbors, cool. go do it, man. Go do yeah. it. Yeah. Speed round. Speed round. <laughs> All right, so this one's from Google, uh, small business. What's trending? Understanding rising consumer interest. It's a very interesting new tool that they got here or enhancement. Since COVID-19 began, this is from Google, we've heard from our retail and brand manufacturing partners that they're hungry for more insights on how consumer interests are changing. Given fluctuations in consumer demand, we see the changes reflected in how people are searching on Google. Last month, there were spikes in search interest for household supplies and jigsaw puzzles as people spent more time at home. This month, we've seen surging interest in sewing machines and baking materials in the US and tetherball sets and chalk in the UK and Australia. Businesses are using a variety of resources to understand changing consumer interests, including Google Trends, social listening, surveys, and their own data in order to help make decisions on the fly. But if they don't know what to look for, there isn't an easy to understand, there isn't an easy way. If, okay, let me start. But if they don't know what to look for, there isn't an easy way to understand which product categories are gaining in popularity and might pose an opportunity. That's why we're launching a rising retail category tool on Think with Google. It surfaces fast-growing product-related categories in Google search, the locations where they're growing, and the queries associated with them. That's the first time we've provided this type of insight on the product categories that people are searching for. When we previewed the data with a group of businesses, they had a lot of creative ideas for how they might apply it, whether for content creation, promotional efforts, or even new products and services. Here are some of the ideas for how it could help for content creation. A cookware company noticed that flour was a growing category in the United States. The team was inspired to explore partnering with a famous local chef to create engaging content with, about recipes that incorporate flour. For promotion, a jewelry and accessories company noted rising interest in products in the quote, free weights category. So the team thought they might partner with fitness influence, influencers who could help promote their products. Similarly, an online business said it would regularly reference the data to inform which products to feature on its homepage through, throughout the pandemic. On product ideas, an apparel company with a fast and flexible production model said its team would use the data to inspire new product line ideas. For the next few months, we'll update the tool with 
fresh data every day and hope this will help businesses of all sizes find new pockets of consumer interest. For additional resources and insights, sign up for the Think with Google newsletter. Speed round. All right, next one, next one here. With, oh, have you ever wondered why, um, you know, your summers went really long as a kid? <laughs> well, there yes. is a reason for that. Yes, there is. Science now has figured it out. So nice. thanks to Inc.com uh, for this article. Uh, the science of why time feels so strange in a crisis. You're not crazy if it feels like time has been playing tricks on you the last few months. So anyway, um, to understand why this is, consider our normal experience of time, even without a pandemic. The steady ticking of a clock doesn't match our subjective sense of time, they say. So, child, as we said earlier, childhood summers lasted approximately one lazy-ass decade. <laughs> <laughs> Not quote-unquote. But anyway, I have that <laughs> lazy-ass part. But anyway, uh, the, the phenomenon, they said, is a simple cause, according to science. The new and expected things we experience, the more memories we form and more memories we form, the more we have of a longer time it feels to us. So... Very hmm. simple. This article wow. makes sense. Is, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. a scientist get it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> anyway. Tip time. Tip time. Tip time. Tip time. All right. Let's uh, thank CNET for this one. This is a story from Katie Connor. How to connect multiple Amazon accounts on the same Echo device. Share your Amazon Pride benefits with uh, other family members with this with this trick. I don't know if it's a trick so much. Everyone in your house uses the Amazon Echo to listen to music and to create to-do lists. However, this can become confusing when everyone is asking, let's call it the Echo, to add something to their to-do list. And Echo can't distinguish between each person's list. Fortunately, there's a setting called Amazon Household for that. It lets you connect another person's Amazon account to your Echo device. You can add one adult and up to four kids to your account. To do so, you open the Echo app and your phone and open the, open the menu. Next, you tap account settings, select Amazon household, and tap start. You'll be instructed to hand your phone to the person you're adding your household so they can sign in to their Amazon account. Tap OK and have them follow the on-screen instructions for signing in. Once they finish connecting the Amazon account to your Echo device, you'll be able to access each other's music and Prime account. That also means they'll be able to buy things from your account using your credit card details. However, you can set up a confirmation code to prevent any purchases from being made with your payment card. To switch back and forth between accounts, just say Echo switch accounts. Make sure that you know which account you'll be using by asking Echo which account is this. Note that if you remove a person from your Amazon household, they won't be able to add their account to another household account for 180 days or about six months. Now that you've got your accounts linked, have some fun. How about it? Tip time. Oh, that sounds good. Okay, my tip. Hey, you know, I've been wondering about this. I put all my pictures on Facebook, but then I what if I want to store them somewhere else? Well, there's a there's a way to do that now. So I, I and I didn't realize this. So basically thanks to uh, Lifehacker. I follow them religiously. And thanks to David Murphy for this. Uh, the there is ability to actually transfer your Facebook photos to like Google Photos, for example. So all you have to oh, do interesting. is yeah, go to your settings, go to settings, and then um, look at in the top left there. You have general security and login. There's your Facebook information. You click on Facebook information, and it there's a line that says transfer a copy of your photos or videos. And then wow, and yeah, this is really cool. You have to log in with your password. And then what you have to do at that point is also pick the uh, pick the uh, service that you want to transfer your photos. Now, cool. You know, if you have like 10 million photos, like this author said that he was at uh, you know Northwestern uh, when first Facebook first came out, so he has it took him like a few days or something like that. Of course, so, of course, you know. that's great. But yeah, just transfer it in. It'll go into your Google Photos or any other service, Flickr or whatever you guys desire. You know, that's great. Great, that that cool? I love that tip. Yeah, very yeah. cool. All right, tip All right, time, tip time. Time. So this one's really a quick one. This is Learn SQL While Solving Crimes. So at the website sqlpd.com. So this is sqlpd.com. And it's very cool. And you can see that there's a mission brief. And here you would start. And then you can see there's a SQL tab. And this is where you start typing in your stuff. They do a fun little uh, 
sort of set up here where well, this is what they give you basically a story, right? And then you kind of select these things, which are, you know, SQL statements. You can build these SQL statements and then you can see in the results if I'm not going to do this, if it's right or not. And then there's also a guide. And if you don't know what we're talking about SQL, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It's a language used across multiple data store, uh, I mean, to manipulate data stored in tables. Each table can just contains columns for different fields and rows for different records. So th typically this language is used to interact with um, databases of some sort, right? And it's a very important thing to learn and everyone should should at least give it a go and have a, a, just a basic understanding of it. And so you can you could buy a license if you want to get a more enhanced version or you can just log in and fiddle with this, this, this free individual version uh, to go through this one thing. I just think it's really a fun way to learn, uh, a, you know, something that could be beneficial in your career and just to better round you out, you know, is SQL. So check it out, sqlpd.com, sqlpd.com. That's cool. I like that. It's very, it was very easy to kind of, you know, move away some of the, the query terms. That's kind of cool, actually. Very cool. Very All right, easy. everyone. Thanks again for watching, listening to nerdstalker.com. I'm Adolfo Ferranda, again, at Nerdstalker on Twitter. Please give us a thumbs up and a like and a subscribe. Hit the bell, all the things. Greg, where do we get more information about you? Hey, I could just go to our about us page on nursehawk.com and you can reach me on Twitter, which I'm very active at social Greg, where you can see the actual uh, sign right down there in the bottom left there. Uh, so, you know, get a hold of me, follow me and we'll talk. Yeah. And I wish you would have trademarked the, your catchphrase when we close the show each time, because now everyone is saying it and you would have been a millionaire by now. <laughs> Be careful out there. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Take care. I have no feeling anymore. She looked.